third round of the URC and the cream is beginning to rise to the top. My name's Mark, let's talk rugby. Okay, so some decent games in the third round. Not as many, you know, close games we had in the first couple of rounds, but still some entertaining games and some really good rugby played as well. We're going to start with Friday night games. So first up is Scarless 23, Connick 24. I have a full review of this on the channel if you want to go and check it out. So Connacht attack off a line out to go wide. Initially good defence from the Scarlets and force a kick from Carty, but it's a superb kick and Nicholas wins the race to the ball. But he pa- basically passes it to no one like and and uh you know it was almost like, you know, an own goal in rugby terms, pass it over his own try line. O'Connor dives on that least ball to score and then Carty adds the extras for seven nil. Connacht then strike off the back of a scrum, move it quickly they go, uh, you know, nice cross kick finds Hansen. He's unmarked in the far touchline and dots down to score. Well executed there and just a great kick from Carty. Scarlet's then go up the line for a penalty. They manage to maul it well, go out to the backs and they're coming to the left, recycle quickly and then they don't let that conic defence settle Garrett Davis over to score. Scarlet's then cut Connacht just completely open. Bunyak key in the bin at this stage. Johnny Williams offloads it at contact and puts Eddie James through a gap. He draws the cover and puts Davis over for his second to tie the game up. Connacht then go end to end score. Connor Oliver breaks the line, takes it from the 22 to around about halfway, finds Boyle, and then he gives it on to Ben Murphy, who has the pace to finish. And then it's 21 14 at half time. Connacht then offside from a kick at the start of the half. Coslo uh, just about gets his kick over. It goes in off the post. Scarlet's then win the penalty at Scrum. And, you know, Scrum went better for them, I think, in the second half than first half when they were, got, you know, got in a bit of trouble. Then Yon Lloyd slots that one to make it 21 20. We have a period then of kick tennis. Mac Hansen. Uh, claims a long kick, decides to run it back, but just about to get, get scragged. Scarlett's get over the ball, win a penalty. Costello slots it for 23 points to 21. And, you know, Scarlett's leading the game with just over five minutes to go. And you think they could hang on then and it would be a decent win for them. But Carl Ford gets a chance to win the game for Connick from the tee. And he does well to, to put it over from the angle. And 24-23 to Connacht is the final score. So after this, I saw some criticism of Dwayne Peel. And, you know, I'm not sure. I would have, I would have thought that he, it would have been last year that he would have got more criticism. But for me, you know, Scarlet's have been far more competitive this year compared to, you know, they, they were part of Puff last year, honestly. Um, did well to come back at Connacht. But they do need to find something extra to win these tight games. But at least they're putting themselves in the position, you know, to be able to have a chance to win these games. Whereas last year they were, you know, falling off by uh, more than a couple of scores in, in a lot of games. Um, probably Connick's worst performance of the season, but you know, came out with a win for them. So that's got to be a positive for them. But I still think that performances. You know, um, in the first two games were actually pretty good. So they want that going on an upward trend, not, not dropping off now. Next game then, Cardiff 36, Glasgow 52. You know, high score, a lot of high scoring games this weekend. Doby with a lovely snipe from the tram lines. He evades a couple of would-be tacklers to go over from about 40 meters out. Just a great score from him. Then he gets, he's, he's involved in the next try, but not in a positive way. Um, slow to clear from the base of a rook. You know, a meter out from his own line and he shapes the kick. Thomas gives him a push. He drops the ball and then Thomas uh, grounds the loose ball to, to tie it up. Cardiff then just absolutely destroy Glasgow in the scrum. Some nice intricate play before Winnick goes over to score. And, you know, Cardiff, although, you know, it looks like a big score in the end, you know, that they're lost by, they're pretty competitive for a lot of the game. Um, 
two plotted in carries well for uh glasgow they spread the ball from a scrum to 22 then next phase row shugs off kind of a weak challenge i think two cardiff players maybe just got in each other's way and he went through the gap and they didn't really you know put much of a hand on him he goes over to score cardiff then on attack but tom jordan intercepts inter sorry intercepts not intercepts uh intercepts sheedy's pass and goes the length of the field to score. It was a bit weird because Jordan, like he dummies initially, and then Sheedy is, or sorry, Jordan is standing there right in the passing channel, right in his line. And it's just one of those ones. I, you know, <laughs> we've all been there, right? Where you know you're, you, you shouldn't do what you're about to do, but your body is just automatically doing it. And you're going, like, even be, as it's happening, not even afterwards, you just say, no, I think that's probably the way Sheedy was thinking was because he just passes it straight to him. You know, he's standing there and it's just one of those, he went to dummy pump and then went for the pass straight after. And if he had had that back, he definitely wouldn't, wouldn't have done that. Um, but you know, uh, Jordan does go to length to score. Then two Pilato just absolutely bounces off the defender, goes around another couple to score. Just brilliant individual try from him. That guy is class. Um, Tom Jordan then claims an up and under, uh, makes a break. Then he puts Hugh Jones under the post. Ed Byrne then gets over for Carter shortly after the break to make 33-19 as they start coming back into the game. Then we have nice hands and running lines from Cardiff. Then final offload and Martin is over to score. Really well worked try there from them. Glasgow's then, you know, their mall then delivers just their inevitable try that they get. Um, it seems every game they get at least one mall try. Matt Fagers in the score this time. Cardiff then break off their own mall and it is uh, Connolly who crashes over to bring them back within a score. So that's how close Cardiff got. But then Glasgow had that, you know, little bit extra to pull away again. And, you know, that's one of the mark of them really being champions, I think, was that ability to, to just find something else at the end when everybody's tired and go again. Jack Dempsey with a marauding run uh, before Kyle Rowe. He kicks through twice and he's surrounded by defenders but somehow he gets through and dots the ball down then duncan weir sells a dummy before putting jordan over to score uh in the corner to wrap it up so i think you know cardiff they did well to drag themselves back into contention but 100 percent record is gone now still lots of good teams you know are going to lose to this glasgow team this year i think and you just feel you know cardiff they've got to pick themselves up and get back some momentum because they had a really good start to the season but now you know they can't let themselves just fall away glasgow uh you know so slick at times that midfield pairing um firing again which is is great news for them and great news for scotland as well and then you know coupled with their set piece as well they've got so many threats in their team and looking like they're in really good form at the minute Next time we have Lions 52, Edinburgh 21. So the other Scottish team not fearing as well. Um, so Will Hooter pops over a penalty to open the scoring for the home team. And then they just kept on adding scores from there. Frankie Horns burst out wide on the right, led to Q and Horn scoring in the opposite corner. Some really nice hands as well and good movement, um, you know, to get the ball from one side to the other. And they just kept, uh, you know, Edinburgh's defence guessing. Then Lions find space at wide on the right and uh, Max Wane shows good pace and footwork to score. They then go the length of the field for the next one. Van der Merwe collecting um, a Vandenberg grubber to score. Yonker then picks a lovely line to go over next to the post and it's just one-way traffic the whole way. Another score then from uh, Max Wane after good work from uh, Wool Hunter or Wool Hooter, sorry. Uh, then Q and Horn returns a kick, beats a few defenders, and then a uh, couple of other players involved in there, but then Frankie Horn gets over to score. Van der Merbe then collects his own chip to score the line seven try before half time, 48 nil at the break. And geez, <laughs> like, you, you know, Edinburgh fan, you're not happy with that. I think, was it? Yeah, it was Edinburgh's, uh, I don't know, some, one of their social media accounts or something. They, they, 
and pause posting on it for five days <laughs> after this result. Um, and you can see like 48 nil at halftime is just absolutely crazy. Um, in fairness, Edinburgh, they did like, you know, find some scores in the second half. Gilchrist over from close range. And, you know, they're just looking to salvage pride at this stage, really. Harrison then adds a second for them as, you know, they, they were battering away at the line before he gets over. And then Muncaster um, gets a third. He came off the bench to score that one. And he's honestly been decent this season. You know, uh, good to see you know, him getting a bit more game time there. Uh, and then Max Wane gets his hat trick. Try and Edinburgh's nightmare is finally over. Um, Lions looking so impressive this season. You know, definite step up from what we've seen from them previously in previous seasons in the URC. And, you know, harking back to, you know, that period in Super Rugby where they, they you know, they look like, uh, you know, the best team in the Southern, Southern Hemisphere. Um, you know, so if they can get back up to that level again, you know, we could see another South African uh, team, you know, lifting the trophy as well. Uh, but let's see if they can actually keep it up from here. You know, it's early days in the season, especially for them after just two games. Edinburgh then looked all at sea in that first half. Steady things a little in the second half, but really do need to bounce back from this. Just, you know, a defeat like that really can, like, suck the soul out of a team. Um, so a lot of work for the coaches, really, to, to get them up. They'll obviously just want to say, listen, let's just park that and let's move on. But, you know, it, it, it's a big test, I think, mentally for the players to be able to do that and, and to, to come up with a po- positive result next time out. You know, they started the last two seasons um, well and then fell off. Um, but now it looks like this season they're going to try and do it the opposite way around. Start poorly and then maybe come back um, strongly in, in the second half of the season. We'll have to see. Um, Bulls 42, Ulster 21 next. So Bulls go off the back of a dominant scrum. Uh, Aaron then slips a tackle and wriggles his way over to score. Then a nice cross kick to Stockdale out wide. He scores just that signature chip and chase try in the corner. You've seen him score so many times. It's basically, you know, uh, the one that he scored against the All Blacks, he scored one against England. Uh, he scored plenty for Ulster as well um, in exactly the same mould. So without even seeing, seeing the, the clip of that, you probably know um, how that one went. Next then, we have uh, a nice chip from Willie LaRue out to Chamberlain on the wing. He passes back inside for Creel to score, and then Bulls are back in front. Bulls then drive over in the mall, and Grobler is the score. Then Creel sells a dummy, gets his hands free, and puts Kane and Moody over to score the Bulls' bonus point try. And Moody did well as well to get over you know, and get that finish. Another mall try then from the Bulls. This time is Hanacon. Hanacom, sorry, is the score. Nice hands um, from the Bulls before Chamberlain beats the drift to go over. Basie, well, as I say, beats the drift. Basie, I think Ulster pretty much over drifted and then he just went through a gap to score. Carson then bumps off a tackler and finishes, in, uh, you know, I think it was in the corner, right? He scored, yeah. Nice score, but Ulster, you know, <laughs> Like less than 10 minutes to go, um, and again, the second try, there's no way they're coming back from there. Um, Cock then starts off uh, a break for Ulster. He's been a decent signing for them. Uh, Lowry and then Shanahan combining before Moore finishes that one off. And then Bulls get the final say, say as low, forces the way over um, to finish it up. So, like the Lions, Bulls have had a really, you know, great start to the season and seem to be firing on all cylinders. And, you know, not going to be surprised if they're up there challenging again this season. They've been there, thereabouts every single season uh, of the URC. Ulster, very up and down so far this season. And I think they're going to be hoping that this was just a blip and they can find, you know, uh, a vein of form from somewhere. Next time we have Bennett on five, Leinster 35. Again, full review of this up on the channel. So, you know, go and check that out if you're interested. Um, so, Start off with Leinster. They go for catch and drive. Looks like they're going to drive it all the way over as well, but it goes down just short of the line. And then Spagnolo um, pull it down illegally, so it's a penalty try, and he goes to the bin for that. Leinster then attack off the restart. Frawley puts Ringrose through a gap. He finds Jameson Gibson Park, who passes back inside for Frawley. Nice hand handoff from him as he goes over to score. 
uh, and you scored from round 22 and that, that you know, really were purring at their best. Um, just in that, that one move there. Some excellent passes, you know, long passes just made it look easy as well. Um, then we have a solid scrum from them. They go inside to Osborne, who carries well, and then immediately go uh, back out to the tram lines where the scrum took place, and Conan goes over to score. Then Leinster go inside from another scrum. Jim O'Brien gets stopped, but then they go out the back, and Doris crashes over under the post, and that's their bonus point try. Benetton then um, claim the ball in the line out, set up a mall. The backs join in. Maureen kind of joined in and then decided he didn't know what he was doing, so left it. Um, but it didn't stop them anyway over to go. And Manfredi uh, scored their you know only points of the game. Then at, at the death, uh, Baird, back from a sin bin, claims it in the line out. They set up a mall. It's going forward and Barn breaks off and goes over to score the final try of the game. So Benetton... Um, you know, they've looked very out of source this season, haven't, you know, put in a performance anywhere near the heights that they reached last year. And, you know, with other teams improving as well, they, they, they've got to get, you know, something going soon because, uh, you know, there's too many good teams now in this league, I think, for you to have an extended poor run and then expect to be able to, to make those playoffs. So even though it's early days in the season, you know, Points lost now are very hard to, to pick up later on in the season. Lens then, uh, you know, didn't really have to get out of second gear, honestly, to win this one. They've rotated well so far this year as well. It's good to see a strong team in an away game rather than, you know, them, them always playing at home. Um, Got to be happy with another bonus point win. But soon, I think, you know, um, the the focus has to switch to finding that fluidity um, that really does make them stand out from other teams. And, you know, it was kind of missing for most of this game other than Frawley's try, which was, you know, just kind of out of the top drawer. Uh, next then we have Dragons 30, Sharks 33. So Evans opens the scoring from the tee for the Dragons. Venter then um, goes to the bin for a high tackle. Basham drives over for the Dragons as they're taking, you know, uh, command a little bit. But then uh, Chutuka forces his way over from close range. Sharks responding. Then another score from meter out. Um, Coleman stretches the Dragons' lead. Rosser then uh, makes great ground in very tight space on the left before passing inside to Roger Williams, who goes under the post. And then just amazing hands and interplay um, from the Sharks and Hendrick. Hendricks goes over um, just before the break to make it 22 12. I thought that was a very important score for them because, you know, it would have been a really decent lead 22 um, 5 for the Dragons, you know, um, at half time. But that really did, did make it so that Sharks felt like they were still in touch. Then we have a great carry and offload from Messa Hazen to make uh, a try for Julius. And Sharks really are right back in it now. Lovely kick into the corner from Hendricks, collected by Hooker to score. And now Sharks are actually ahead. And, you know, Dragons really did let that slip, that lead slip. Um, Jenkins then goes to the bin for a deliberate knock on. And Dragons have a great chance now, you know, to reestablish themselves with a man advantage. Carter burrows his way over to put them back in front. And then Clock is in the red. Dragons desperately defending on their own line. Uh, and Aaron Owen almost intercepts it, but he spills the ball forward. And then uh, Mbatha picks that, that loose ball up and goes over between the posts to win it for the Sharks. So, you know, two points for, for the Dragons from this one, but could so easily have been five for them. Looking uh, better this season, but, you know, they've got to get a few more wins in the coming rounds to show some real progress of heel. Sharks then, you know, were pretty poor in the URC last year. They showed hard to score the winner in that 84th minute, though. And it looks like, you know, they're, they're going to uh, hopefully uh, be more competitive this year. It's been a nail butter for them, though, uh, so far this season. You know, both of their games that defeat Iconic and this one, um, high scoring and, and lo winning, 
losing first and then winning uh, by by a single score. Uh, next, then we have Zebra five, Stormers thirty six. So uh, Matea with three penalties, Stormers establishing a lead in the first sort of thirty minutes. Then nicely worked line out on the edge of twenty two. Stormers disguise their attack uh, very well, break that line, and then Zas finishes off the move and. That I think was, yeah, that was just before the break. I think that was in the 40th minute. And then into the second half, then another Matea uh, penalty before then Stormers find some space at wide close to the line. Gallant then puts Harsenberg over to score. Then we have some, you know, really nice strong carry from Nell. There's a snipe in there. Then Zas goes through a gap. He's stumbling a little bit, but manages to hold his feet and then stay strong to finish well. Then uh, Zebre, well worked from them for their only score. Nice hands to the width. And then uh, Jesse chips and has the pace to get there to his own kick to dot down and score. Stormers then spread it from a five meter scrum. And Davids gets over in the corner for the bonus point try. So Zebre, you know, would have been on a high after beating former champions Munster last week. Couldn't reach the same heights against, you know, another former champion. Uh, this week and need to make sure that they continue to be competitive I feel you know can't be like last year where they got some decent results in the early rounds and then it didn't really produce anything um, for the rest of the season Stormers get the first win of the season some really good play from them and you know they'll want to now go on a run if they can uh, final game of the weekend then, Munster 23, Ospreys nil. So Shane McCarthy scores the quickest try in URC, Pro 14, Celtic League, Magnus League, whatever, Pro 12, whatever other um, names that this league has had down through the years. Um, after Watkin drops the kick, and it's around about 10 seconds. I don't know whether it's under 10 seconds, but it it looked like it was maybe 10 seconds that he scored in, but certainly the quickest try we've ever seen in this league. Crowley then adds a penalty after Morgan Morris uh, picking for holding on after, you know, he went on a decent run, honestly, from uh, the back of a scrum in his own 22. Munster then uh, drive a line at Mowell over and a fireless scorer. Uh, rain and wind, like, continue to lash down. Like, it was just... It was one of those wet and windy, um, you know, Irish, um, you know, it's not even a winter night, but it looked like a winter night. Um, we, we have that ability over here, honestly, to go from like summer and then flick the switch and straight into winter. And then actually today, um, it was like 18, 20 degrees or something. It's crazy the way the weather is at the minute. But Munster then camped on the line to go wide. Ospreys run at defenders and then Nash scores in the corner for 18 and a half time. Then we have nice interplay from Munster that puts McCarthy through a gap. He offloads Jack O'Donoghue, uh, who finishes off and wraps up that bonus point uh, for Munster. So Munster obviously would have wanted a response after that defeat to Zebra. They got one despite those conditions. Crowley, I thought, looked very assured. And, you know, uh, they had just too much for Ospreys. Ospreys really struggled so far this season they need to turn things around i think uh if they're going to you know make a tilt at those playoffs again this year they do have um i'm pretty yeah they do have a win on the board which will at least is something for them to build on but you know this performance here it's one of those ones where like edinburgh just park it and then uh move on and and try and get something out of the next game okay so Next, we're going to have a look at the table. We're not going to go too much into details. I'm just going to uh, tell you who's where. Um, and, you know, as the season kind of continues, we'll, we'll go into a bit more depth in terms of, of talking about the table. But for now, uh, first place is Leinster, 15 out of 15 um, in terms of points. You know, performances haven't been great, but they've got to be happy with that. Champions, Glasgow, um, coming up there now, second place on 11 points so after that you know um disappointing defeat to ulster they've got things back on track munster then in third with 11 and uh connacht also uh 11 points in fourth place and cardiff 11 points in fifth place so still lots of sorting out to do um you know near the top of the table lines then maximum points for them out of two games 10 points in sixth place bulls 
two wins out of two, out of two as well. And they've got nine points and seven. Uh, Sharks then in eighth place on six points despite that opening um, defeat to Connacht. Ospreys then in ninth on six points as well. Sebre um, in tenth. Dragons at eleventh. Uh, both also on six points. Stormers then at twelfth on five points. You know they're going to want to be looking up that table uh, as will. Ulster there down in, in 13th with, with five points. You know, um, it, it was a good start with that win over Glasgow, but they've got to, got to find something else now from here. Scarlet's then, um, you know, in, in 14th place. Uh, they have the one draw that was against Benetton, um, with, with three points, but they've looked pretty good, uh, this season. They just need to find a window, uh, or they, there will be, you know, um, there will be more merit, I think, for the, the, the cause for, for Peel to go. Um, at the moment, though, I, I, I think it's way too early for that. Next then, Edinburgh in 15th place. Um, you know, after that dire, um, drubbing that they got at the hands of the Lions as well on three points. And then bottom of the table, Benetton. Um, you know, we're used to seeing an Italian team at the bottom of the table in recent years, but, uh, not Benetton. Uh, they're down there on two points. We would expect them, you know, to rise up, but they, they've, they've got to, got to, uh, improve their performances if they're going to do that. Okay. So that's the end of this one. Um, we will have a preview, obviously, of next week's games, uh, coming up probably on, on Thursday. Um, as long as I don't have something that interrupts before then. If I get time, I might do another video, um, during the week as well. We'll have to see. I might do one on, on Wednesday, uh, because I have the day off. So we, we might, we might do one there, but it, it, it really depends on, on how things kind of shake out. But for now, hope you enjoyed this one and catch you guys on the next one.